back to the podcast, everybody. This is episode uh, 198, um, and we got a special guest today. We got my good buddy, Max. Max Kerman from ba 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 Arkells. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. This is an honor. Oh, of and this is a and this is a Connor. Um, I hope you're. How's uh How you doing, man? Have you used that one before? I actually haven't. That's the first yeah, one. That's, yeah, the, f- that's the first time I dropped that one. That's quick. That's <laughs> your comedian. I've never <laughs> um made a pun intentionally, like in my life. Anytime I've made a pun, it's always been by accident. And then someone goes, "I see what you did there." And then I go, "Huh? Oh, I don't see what I did there. <laughs> what, can you <laughs> can you explain it to me?" <laughs> well, you rhymed. You know, an honor and a Connor. Yeah, that's well. That's honestly. It's better if you do it by accident because then like that's you're not even trying and you do mm-hmm. it like that's that's pretty sick because I really have to try, you know, yeah, those are just your comedic instincts, your <laughs> rapping instincts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your freestyling instincts. Coming in. Yeah, I could have been a I could have been a freestyle rapper, but I went the other route, you know, <laughs> I'm sure same as you as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those guys on the corner, you know, who are just like making freestyles about people walking by them you know those guys yeah yeah i see those I'm on tiktok all the time that's crazy yeah, i'm pretty impressed by them actually like or yeah. are you impressed or are you not impressed me i'm yeah i'm pretty impressed because i feel like a part it's so impressive that a part of my brain is like there's no way that this isn't like already like scripted or something because mm-hmm. it's like it's incredible like that well, i forget that one dude on tiktok but he's like you're wearing a, sh- a blue shirt and i'm and uh and i <laughs> you know <Nailing> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck well he doesn't do that but <laughs> that'd be that'd be even better though a guy who goes out to freestyle but he's like so bad but he still does it <laughs> he's out there on the grind man <laughs> yeah he's, he's trying in to, the time <laughs> he's trying to get better and he never does <laughs> <laughs> i started here back in 2013 it's like now check me out yeah. he's like has not improved <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like okay maybe maybe this isn't for you man <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so what's up, man? How's, um, how you been? I'm pretty good. We, uh, when does this come out? How soon is the turnaround? Uh, this will come out in two days. Okay, good. Quick turnaround. Yeah, we, uh, we're getting ready to go on tour. So we, we fly to Berlin, our band Arkells, uh, on Friday. We play there on Sunday with lights. We have a tour, like three dates in Germany and a bunch of shows in the UK after that. So we're in like tour prep mode. But, uh, Damn. Well, thank. Well, thanks for putting aside some some no. time for me. I appreciate it. Um, that's. Uh, have you ever been? Have you ever done shows? Over yeah, there? We, we, yeah. We've been over there a, a handful of times now. And, cool. Uh, it's it's fun. You know, it's like just walking around. Like the shows are great, but also just being being in those city centers. Ever, have you ever been to Berlin or Hamburg or anything like that? No, I've yeah. had a ham. I've had a hamburger, but I've never been to <laughs> you did ha- Hamburg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, have you ever been to Berlin or had a hamburger? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the shows are good, uh, but, and, but like the sightseeing is also wicked. Uh, and lights. Do you know lights? Are you familiar with lights? Yeah, I. Um, yeah, I, I listen to her music like all all the fucking time. So I think she she we followed each other on Instagram like a couple months ago, but I've never actually oh, like met her in person. But she's but awesome. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, our manager Ashley manages Ash uh, manages lights and Arkells, and so this is sort oh, of like cool. a dream tour for us because we've been pals for like ten uh-huh. years, it, more probably. Right. And so now we're finally getting. And we have we just put a song together in the, in the summer, so it'll be fun just to. And be it's able a to, and it's a great song. Yeah, Everybody thank you, thank go you. listen to it. It's yeah. It's called Human Being. It's very good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so it's uh so it's good. So we're just kind of packing up, getting our stuff together, figuring out what I'm gonna wear on stage. Right, um, dude. That's. I, before touring, I never even like thought mm-hmm. of that, but that is such a big part of packing. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like, yo, you gotta, you gotta plan out like every fucking outfit. You gotta make sure you look, you look your best. You gotta look spiffy, you know? You know, you know what's interesting too is that it's, I'm like, the older I get, the more mindful I have to be just related to technology <laughs> and social media. Because when the, mm-hmm. our band started touring, like, you know, in 2009, 2010, when we really started going and like sure there's facebook and you like you know right upload <laughs> some of your audience is gonna be like what the fuck you op- <laughs> uh you you know upload like uh you know a hundred photos <laughs> at once <laughs> right uh, and and who knows who'd see them right uh, so you and just the- have to like look at yourself as much really though because it was just like you weren't constantly 
yeah you know, servicing tiktok and instagram and but the, yeah but now you're like okay fuck we have like 12 shows coming up like i can't wear the same thing every night like you want to <laughs> keep it fresh you know so it's like, exactly you way more on it the budget dude, for the clothing is uh, going through the roof <laughs> yeah i know it's fuck dude society these days man <laughs> i uh i actually had a dream last night that i did a show in my pajamas oh yeah <laughs> yeah it was cool though i don't know what it was but i was like i think subconsciously i think it was like my brain being like because I, f- I feel like i've we've been this tour has been so long that it's like it feels like sometimes we're just going through like the motions of it mm-hmm. so i feel like my brain it's like it was like oh one day you're just gonna fucking show up in your pajamas Mm -hmm. because you're like whoa whatever you know but i like i would never do that but i feel like that's that was like a subconscious like fear um it's like going on stage there is some gen gen z style though that is like pretty pajama centric yeah Yeah, pajama core yeah pajama core like you dress (laughs) sharply oh so do you thanks oh thank you thank you uh how do you um you're talking about so like the routine of tour and Mm -hmm. like do do you think try to consciously think about keeping it exciting or just like reminding yourself okay like there's a lot of people who showed up to you know to the show and paid Mm -hmm. a lot of money for a ticket like because it's so easy because it's and it's very natural like once you've been on the road for two months to be like okay where the fuck are we okay cool uh right another show who cares like not who cares but no i know what you mean like trying to be like present in the moment yeah more so um there was like a like I think maybe like the the second run of shows we did, it was the longest one. And by like the last week of it, I was just like, my brain was just fried. Like I was just like, so, I don't know. It was so, it was just so, so much of it. And I sort of like, I was sort of feeling like that. And it was like, oh, whatever. It's just another show. And which sucks to think about mm-hmm. it. But, um, and then the infamous fucking uh, tour bus fire happened and it yeah. honestly it really was like to be honest it was a real as shitty as it was it was a it was a huge like kick in the in the pants for sure for everything and it sort of like revamped everything in a way and mm. it's like now i'm like oh i need to i'm like making a conscious effort to be more present and mm. um especially when i'm on stage because it's like no if i'm in a if i'm in fucking like buffalo it's like i don't really like i don't really i don't care to be present in buffalo i don't really mind <laughs> um, but we love buffalo but we love we, buffalo. i love buffalo don't get me <laughs> wrong and every the show was incredible and i had a great time but um but uh but yeah i'm just trying to be more present on stage and um mm-hmm. and it's because that's it's obviously you know as well it's more rewarding for yourself as a performer and obviously it's way more it's it's way more beneficial to the to the audience because they are getting someone who's like you know excited and happy to be there you know yeah totally no uh, yeah yeah that's yeah on stage what what is it like for a comedian because for like uh, a musician you know there's like whatever you're playing the guitar and you have to that's that that kind of <laughs> well, comes let's, let's not understate it whatever no, you're no, no, playing but, but like <laughs> there's there's some, but you play the songs a lot but it's also right. you're kind of stressed out about like okay is the audience enjoying themselves what am i going to say after this song you know, right <laughs> like there's a lot to sort of you're thinking a lot and you're not necessarily being like okay this is awesome i'm enjoying this i'm going to really appreciate the fact that all this stuff's happening what, right with, with uh with your job are you th- are you co- always sort of like oh man the audience needs to laugh a little harder or like oh fuck i botched that last ah fuck i tripped up on my words right and that's haunting me for the next three minutes like do, do <laughs> right. you, how, does that, how does that work for you uh yeah i mean definitely because i feel like i I've, well, yeah, it it is very, you can tell when like a crowd is not laughing where they should be or where they usually laugh at other shows. And it's like a consciously you're like, oh, okay, I got to figure out why that is, or maybe just move on from this bit entirely or just wrap it up quicker than I usually would. Um, but that again that's another thing with being like present it's like it's easier to pick up on those things and like adapt and Mm. and like also just like looking and at someone's face yeah you can't usually see that much of the crowd Mm -hmm. which is great but the people like the few front rows that you do see it's like you can 
that's how you can tell for like the entire rest of it because because it's like you fucking see every like dude the worst thing is like i one time i did a show i think it was in it might have been like last in buffalo i think it was in buffalo and uh, there was like in the third row there was a guy sleeping <laughs> <laughs> like on his like girlfriend's shoulder which is like she was super engaged like she was um you know happy to be there so i feel like it, the thing was like hey i'm just gonna bring my boyfriend to this youtuber i like um <laughs> and then he was like okay i'll get a good i'll get a good rest in i guess <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect i'm actually really tired um but and that's fine and i, I saw that and i was like a part of me was like, should I call this guy out? Should I, should we get him to, should we wake him up? Um, but I was like, I'll just, it's not, I'm just going to let him get some sleep. Get some <laughs> sleep. It's not worth it. <laughs> I, had a, I had a terrible tendency. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm getting better at now is to like identify the one person in the crowd who's like having, who like yawned, you know, or, right. or doesn't seem to be engaged and just, just thinking about them the entire show. I'm like, and then finally I was like, Max, you like, can you just focus on like the hundreds of yeah. thousands of other people here that are like <laughs> right. very pumped to see you? Like, yeah, why, exactly. why are you such a masochist? Like why, <laughs> why do you continue just to like focus or it's like, you know, I know like anybody in our line of work is always like thinking about ticket counts. And yeah. I, I made a, a commitment to myself like a long time ago to not look at ticket counts anymore because they just stress right. me out to no end. And I heard like a Chris Martin from Coldplay quote and they play like football stadiums. Right. And, and he's right. like, honestly, if I can never changes, like I'll go to bed at night thinking, man, like we got to move more tickets in Pittsburgh, man. Fuck. We got to move. Like <laughs> the, there's the t- like Pittsburgh's only 60% sold. Fuck. And it's like, meanwhile, right. like 60% sold in Pittsburgh is literally 35,000 tickets or something. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, okay. So I, so I don't look at ticket counts anymore. And, uh, that's really smart. I, yeah. Just cause I'm just like, all you can do is just like promote the show. But, uh, but, you know, do, 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 do everything you can in your power. Yeah. And then, and if because show oftentimes up, they, show up. they show up because if you, because what I found myself doing is like, if I just walked on stage on, on that particular tour that I'm talking about and just I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a bunch of people here. Sick. Awesome. But I wasn't doing that. I was just like looking in the back corner. I'm like, ah, oh, that's the 30% of the, the show that's not sold. Fuck. Right. You're just like, you're just like yeah. looking at the back empty corner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like true. We, we could have sold them. So but that's the n- neuroticism of, uh, yeah i mean a working artist (laughs) it is so um yeah i know what you mean because it it is like because i'm the same way i need to i think i need to do that as well because especially on this tour i was like i was checking fucking every city like i was just going down the line just fucking seeing like how everything was doing and stuff and it was like i don't know it, it was like not smart or like good for my mental health because like obviously i know because i'm I'm when I go to a show I'm not I usually don't buy tickets like right off the bat anyway I'm usually like fucking last minute anyways so it's Mm -hmm. like so like that also other people are like that so I'm like I'm not like obviously people it'll it'll go up and even if not it's fine because like I've you know it's like perspective and you think back to like starting out and doing shows for like fucking like 10 or 20 people and then it's Mm -hmm. like oh yeah look at all there's actually more people who actually want to see me. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's hard. It's, it's easy to get stuck in the, the fucking loop of it. But, mm-hmm. um, I do want to talk about, um, your band. Oh, obviously. Okay, no. <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> if that's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> bro lay off, man. Yeah. What the fuck? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to talk about this shit. Um, so you, it is a, uh, you, you formed the band in Hamilton. Mm-hmm. your hometown uh, yeah my hometown mm-hmm. and uh yeah i remember being in high school i think 2010 or 2011 and my friend i think it was my friend justin who was like um do you know justin he was in a band called the bandicoots oh, okay yeah, yeah i remember that name from yeah. yeah they yeah. were like a hamilton band i don't know if they still make music i haven't talked to him in like fucking years but mm-hmm. um uh yeah he was like there's this new band this i I found they're called our cows are like they're like from here and i was like fuck yeah and then we (laughs) yeah we listen to your music uh all the time and me and uh jenna i think we saw you in 2014 or 2015 at oshaga oh nice yeah um 
yeah, in Montreal. That was the only time I went to Oshaga. But um, yeah, so I've been listening to you guys for a fucking long ass time, which so this is cool. Um, so how did you? I mean, have you always like? Like how long? When did you start like getting into to music? Yeah, so my dad, uh, who's an awesome guy, he was like a DJ at his radio station at college in Detroit. Oh, cool. So he, so he had all these like vinyl records that he like trucked around for the rest of his life. So as a kid, like we, I listened to a lot of Beatles in the house, like a lot of Motown because Motown is obviously Detroit music. Cool. So, so I, so I always like loved like some of my earliest memories is like bringing. We had a vinyl player. This is making me sound very, very old, but because this is not the technology at the time, it would have been like <laughs> CDs. But for whatever reason, we had a vinyl player in my kindergarten class, Whoa. which is weird, right? Like, but I would bring Abbey Road, the Beatles record, and just listen to it during playtime. So it was always very no way. yeah. And then uh, in high school, like I picked up a guitar and started to write songs to impress my my girlfriend my first girlfriend i was like i'm gonna write her a thousand <laughs> songs uh actually one of the songs ended up on our first record jackson square tragic flaw but that's it's kind of funny to listen to that song because it's like i wrote that I was like 16 years old but um, <laughs> that's crazy yeah and then um i jammed like with my friends across the street that they had like a drum kit in their basement and we you know played weezer and cold play and the rolling stones and Beatles stuff and and then cool. I went to McMaster. So I'm from Toronto originally, but then I went to McMaster's like looking to start a band and mm -hmm. welcome week. Everyone kind of has to be friendly to each other. And I was like, this is my opportunity to like really start the band network yeah. network. Right. So basically <laughs> I was like kind of profiling people. I'm like, does that guy, might, he might look like he's a band guy, you know? Just wow. like, and I, and I probably have like the 50 people. I was like, what kind of music are you into? And uh, I met two guys on the first day, Mike, who's our guitarist, Mike DeAngelis. He mm -hmm. was like, ah, oh, like I'm into this band called the Weaker Thans from Winnipeg, who were like my favorite band at the time. I was like, holy oh, shit, no way! I, I was like, do you play an instrument? And he's like, I kind of play the guitar. I'm like, you're in the band. And he's like, what band? <laughs> and then, come on, the, next, the band. You you're know. in the band. You know the band. We're in the band. The band. Uh, <laughs> and then um, I met Nick, our bassist, uh, the second day because I was wearing a Sam Roberts band T-shirt, who are like a great Canadian rock band from Montreal. Oh uh, yeah. And he was like, yo, I like Sam Roberts band. I was like, oh do you play an instrument? He's like, I, I kind of play the bass. I'm like, you're in the band. <laughs> and that's how the band started. Uh, Damn. And we got lucky because we kind of like grew together in undergrad and we played the battle of the bands and we'd like throw our gear on the Greyhound bus to London, Ontario and play, wow. for, you know, nine people or we'd go get on the go bus to go into Toronto with our like guitars on the undercarriage <laughs> oh my and God. play like, uh, at, you know, at shitty clubs and had the best time. And, uh, just as we were finishing university in our fourth year, senior year, um, mm -hmm. the, the manager from Dynalone Records who manages Alexis on Fire and City in Color uh, yep. heard our music and was like, oh, I want to work with you guys. So basically, we got very lucky in that I think a lot of people who want to pursue their dreams finish university and go, okay, am I going to get a real job or am I going to fuck off to Thailand or right. am I gonna, what am I going to do? We had our path kind of set for us because it was like, <laughs> oh, you can timing. go on tour like right now and your album's going to come out in the fall and <laughs> yeah. let's go. So I was like, Sweet. so we Sweet. like... You know, in terms of like, you know, talking about perspective and stuff like the fact that we've sort of like parlayed whatever we were doing in university, like right into kind of a job that, yeah. we, that we were working for ourselves. We had a couple part time jobs in the beginning, but then right, of course. a few years after we're like, we kind of looked around like, oh, no one's working a part time job anymore. Like this is sick. <laughs> yeah, band sick. Full time. We, yeah, so, yeah, full -time band. yeah. So it's been cool. It's been uh, we feel very lucky that it's sort of like grown at a very kind of like reasonable pace. It wasn't like one day we woke up and we're like, holy shit, now we're this thing. It's like always right. been like kind of trying to win one fan over every day and, and that's that. Fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. that's all you can, that's all you can really do, man. You can just do your best and hope that people <laughs> like what you're doing, I guess. Yeah, it's like, do the stars align? Like, like do they, and you work hard and you have a little bit of luck, you know, you know how yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> I don't, I know how it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I always, it is sort of like, I don't know. I always like reference, because obviously I grew up in, in Canada. I'm Canadian. And there's so many great Canadian bands that I really wish there was a better way of getting them. Not like fucking, 
America and everyone is like the be all end all. But there's like it's so like there's so many incredible like Canadian bands that I wish. I just don't. I I don't know because there's so like there's so much like great like talented people in Canada, especially mm-hmm. in the music scene. Who um, it's like frustrating that they can like, it's hard to like break out into like the other like markets. You know, mm-hmm. um, do you have any like? Because obviously you got you guys have toured like America and stuff. You guys have obviously like f- figured it out. Um, do you guys have any? You have any insight on that? Um, on that aspect yeah, of it? I'd say like. I, th- I feel like because I, th- I feel like every country has uh, has this like bone to pick or, or frustration. Yeah, um, because because, you know, you think about like the point zero 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 one percent band that like is just massive everywhere. And you're like, oh, well, like if, you know, the killers can do it or if, like, you know, or right. name, name a band. Right. Like that, that, right. that every but that is synonymous. But the reality is, is that it's like the the thing you're talking about in Canada is the exact same thing in the UK. So like in the UK, we've played UK festivals over there mm-hmm. and like big festivals with like, like a couple headliners that you'd know. Um, right. And then but there'd be a bunch of other British bands where I'm like, I don't even know this fucking band, who they are. And then right, you see true. them headline a festival and they're like, there's 60,000 Brits losing their fucking mind. Right. And then they come over to Canada and they play the mod club. Right. Uh, you know, they, right. they'll play in Toronto for 250 people. So it's mm-hmm. like, so I think that thing is more commonplace than we sometimes realize. Like same thing in Australia, same thing. And there's a, and again, there's a few that, with a stroke of luck and hard work, like they can kind of like have the same size audience everywhere. Right. But I think there, there is a certain element of like regional pride, like lo- logistics of touring and the cost of touring and investing into other places. True. That is like a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the, the, the counter to that too is like, there's some like really big American bands that like do gangbusters business in America but like, do they sell a ticket in Germany? Like, no. Right. Like, does anybody give it? Like, it's funny talking to our label in Germany, being like, "This thing's the coolest thing," and they're like, "Yeah, no one cares here about that." <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So it's um, yeah. I think like any 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 like success in music, uh, like where and I when I say success, I mean like you're making like a decent living, like recording mm-hmm. and selling your own music is right. really hard. You know. Of um, course. And and then so like extending that to other countries is even even harder. So I try right. to be realistic about about that in terms of like of course the goal is always to be like I just want to play big fucking shows everywhere. Right. But there's also just a reality to like it's just hard. Right. Yeah. Why can't I just perform at huge stadiums all the time? What the yeah. Fuck? Like what's with that man? It's <laughs> yeah, like it's so give annoying. me Wembley or give me <laughs> death. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> but I feel like. Um, you guys especially, you guys are like, um, you're like TikTok and stuff and you're like, you guys are very like active on social media, which I think goes a long way too, especially now, which is like, I think the way to do it, I feel like you have to now, like there's mm-hmm. no, um, there, there's just no choice now if you want to like be in it, like you need to be on, especially TikTok, man, like everyone's on, everyone's on that fucking thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think now, I think that is more and more i think with tiktok and and the internet i think those i guess those barriers i guess or those borders if you will aren't really um well they're still very much there but um i think they can help they can make yeah when you you, uh got onto tiktok Mm -hmm. was it i think we talked about a little bit at harry styles but like was it like a um was it hard for you to adjust to the nature of that app and and why it's different than the other apps because for me it took like Probably like six months. We're like, huh? What? And yeah. now I get it, and I really love it. I, I, right. mean, I have a really good time interacting with it. But yeah. it was just like uh, so unlike Twitter or you know YouTube or right. Instagram or whatever. How was it for you? Yeah, it was pretty much the same because I would my relationship with it was um sorry um I uh yeah I started making a lot of YouTube videos making fun of TikTok and like trends on there and people mm-hmm. on there pretty much and I was very like anti TikTok but yeah <laughs> th- like through that like through using the app so much I was like finding stuff that was like actually like really funny mm-hmm. and creative and like just shit I've never seen before um so and as time goes on 
everyone started using it more and i sort of i was really coming at it from like a like a like a like a purist like an like an artistic standpoint i was like mm-hmm. they're just using other audios and like that someone else did for their own shit that's not cool <laughs> you gotta yeah. make your own stuff <laughs> and it was like um so like i don't know why i was so like i don't know uppity about it but um no 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 and listen that was the resounding attitude right right like for, for everybody be like fuck this app it's knocked me around in a year it's so stupid it's only about dancing and, and then it's right. obviously evolved and the more people that are on it like there's so many like different communities and depends on what your algorithm sends you but right. it, can be, it's, it can be amazing i mean there's a lot of dumb shit on there too but like oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah it never stops um <laughs> but yeah definitely uh it was it took a while but i do i do like it a lot now and it's like i'm i'm on there fucking way too much man i'm just mm-hmm. I'm scrolling all the time. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, fucking no. hate it. Yeah, it's the worst when you're trying to go to bed. And you're like, and you're like, what are you doing? This is like the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, go to bed. Go to yeah, bed. just go to sleep, man. Yeah. Uh, fuck. I had another question I was gonna ask, but I forgot. Um, yeah, dude, what was I gonna talk about? Dude, it was such a good topic to you. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> it was so clutch. It was a transcendent <laughs> yeah. idea. Like some, no one has ever asked this question before, and it's gone. <laughs> and the question's away. like, who's your favorite band? <laughs> <laughs> who's your favorite band? <laughs> I think it talked... I was going to mention something about Canadian artists as well. Um, I think there was... I'm the worst podcast host ever, dude. No, it's all right. Hey, okay, <laughs> let me ask you a question. How do you know? Because um, I was talking to a friend who's going to like a TIFF event. I okay. About this yesterday, mm-hmm. and uh, and and Wallows is playing like a. I don't know. If uh-huh. Talk about this. Oh, who cares? Uh, they're playing uh, like a private <laughs> thing in Toronto. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe cool. It's okay, well, maybe. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm gonna go, and I'm pumped, and I love that band. Uh, I think yeah, they're they're, like, they're great. If the Strokes had like children or something like that, <laughs> yeah, who were <laughs> like, like wrote, yeah, what were you gonna say? If they were, yeah, if they had children who were who were like, all like only on the beach all the time, yeah, yeah, like the Strokes were at the beach, mm-hmm. uh, or the Strokes children were at the beach. Um, how do you know those guys? Because uh, my because my TikTok uh, when they play in Toronto blew up it was just you on stage with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that actually ties into I think what I was gonna say because you mentioned about. Um, you were talking about being on stage as a comedian and like with the crowd Mm -hmm. and uh, being on stage as a musician. That was the first Mm -hmm. time I've done that. And it was like one million times scarier than anything I've ever done on stage for comedy. So um, it was fucking crazy, man. Uh, So the whole, the, uh, we had like a whole meme that started in like 2020. uh, Cause I like, I posted like a picture of the band on Twitter and was like, if YouTube stops working out for me, I'll just join Wallows because I look like all three of those guys combined. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. they they saw it and then they're like jokingly like, all right, they're like, all right, you're in the band or whatever. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just started talking to them. Um, like I started messaging Dylan every once in a while. And then I just kept, we just like kept going on with the meme for like years pretty much. <laughs> and then uh and then i was like on the way back i was in the atlanta airport and then i was i texted dylan i was like yo i'm gonna be home for your second show in toronto i'd love to to come and then he was like uh yeah that'd be sick like it'd be, it'd be funny if you came up on stage and like sang a song with us and i was like yeah that'd be cra- that'd be crazy man uh like because I, I thought he was like joking um because <laughs> <laughs> i was like why would you want me to do that and then uh <laughs> and then he was, and then he like kept talking, but that that was gonna happen. I was like, he's like, all right, so it'll be like the sixth song in the set. Yeah, and I was like, okay, whoa, we'll hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, talk to our uh, guitar tech. He's gonna strap yeah. you up. <laughs> yeah, like you need you need to learn what? these uh, these chords. That, um, I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> so it was. So I was like in the airport, and I was like with my my buddies Jacob and Dean, who are on the road with me, and I was like, uh, I guess I'm gonna go on stage uh, with Wallace tonight, and they're like, okay. That's crazy. So then, uh, yeah, we got there, and uh, I met the band. They were super chill, like the nicest dudes ever. And uh, yeah, I played. It was like the encore song, like the "Are You um, Are You Bored Yet." 
mm. uh, with so I was Claro. In yeah, that. you look like Claro too. You can, right? Yeah. You know. Thanks. <laughs> I really embodied uh, their spirit on stage. Um, but yeah, I did their verse, and like I said, it was like walking out. It was cool to do that, like in Toronto, and like people were actually like stoked that I was there, which was fucking crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, I pretended to play the guitar on stage, and uh, and. And I sang my verses. Yeah, it was just fucking crazy. Because it was like, I tried... <laughs> I didn't have any, like, ear stuff. Like, in-ears or anything. So, oh, I didn't... Just had to just... I was raw-dogging it. I was out oh, there just... Wow. <laughs> yeah, so That's it hard. Was, it was gnarly. It was... So, I heard, like, mostly just the crowd. Um, it's and it very was, jarring for people who don't know how stage sound works. It, when you Because occasionally we'll get, like... A fan to come up on stage and play guitar, right? And and if you're if the band is wearing in ear monitors, it's like the sta- sound on the stage is just kind of drums, <laughs> right? <It's> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the drums and then and the cymbals, right? And like you can't really hear the guitars, you can't hear the bass, you can't hear the keys, you can't really hear anything. Yeah, so, yeah. I can imagine that would have been very confusing for you. Like, what the fuck is going on? It sounds like <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, why here. do you why, why do you sound suck? like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you sounded great when I was over there. What the hell happened? Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, it was like, because when, compared to comedy, when it's just me on stage, like, that's all I have to think about. It's like, it's just my stuff and, like, the crowd. But, like, for a, a musician, it's like, you're playing an instrument, you're singing a song, you have to be in, on the same page of all of your bandmates, you also have to be uh, engaging with the crowd at the same time that you're doing everything, and it's like, I don't fucking know. So I don't know how the, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> so hats off to you. Um, it was a lot of fun. Like I do love. Um, I I loved it a lot. And if you know, it was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was. It was. Well, really you know bad. what? Like I mean, there's there's a lot of different types of bands out there, and there's a lot of different types of performances. Um, but I'd say for our band, um, is we like being as prepared as possible. Like with kind of every moment. And all that also allows mm-hmm. you to be spontaneous too, because I always get uncomfortable watching bands that, you know, finish a song and then there's like 45 seconds of awkward silence as they kind of tune <laughs> the guitars. The right. singer is sort of unprepared as to what to say next. He's sort of clumsily kind of talking to the crowd. And I hate that. And right. Then, but then you'll see other acts that are so dialed in with exactly what they want to say, how they want to say it. Like there's such a command of the crowd. And, you know, mm-hmm. like I'd say, you know, a lot of the pop artists are, I can be really good at it where it's like, you know, Bruno Mars, you go see Bruno Mars. That guy knows every moment of the show, but he delivers it with such authenticity and like, and there's a sense of spontaneity and some of it probably is, but some of it's like definitely rehearsed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say Harry Styles, the show we were at together was yeah. like, he's a master at being comfortable talking to the crowd. He never like stumbles on a word. You can tell he's going places with bits. Like he has a feel for when he wants to talk to the crowd, the yeah. direction he wants to go, how he's going to interact with somebody holding a sign. You know what I mean? Like, and I, and for me, I love that. Like watching Harry deliver that show was so inspiring to me because it, like, yeah. it looked, it looked it, in the same way that you watch a comedian. It's like, it feels spontaneous the way he's delivering the jokes or the way he's executing the banter. But like, you know, a comedian has spent a lot of time honing that, that part of the performance. Right. So we, we try our best to like not make it confusing for us because feeling confused on stage or stressed out or awkward is the worst fucking thing. So it's yeah. just like, okay, how do we do everything to not feel like fucking idiots up there? <laughs> is, is usually the philosophy. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, <laughs> that's a good way to put it, I think. Just <laughs> let's not be idiots, please. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, there's obviously um yeah, he that guy fucking nails it. I think if if he didn't do music, I think he probably also would have been a, a very good uh a comedian as well. I think <laughs> I think honestly, most musicians. I think there's. I've we talked about this, but now there is a them, no. Some of them would be terrible. I don't know if I could be a good comedian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or, and writing jokes and delivering jokes. Though, that's a whole other thing. I can never. I do. think you could figure it out. It's if fucked. I had a good team of writers, I could do it. But yeah. I don't think I come up. Okay, with I'll be your. I'll be your ghostwriter. I'm not be good. Ghostwriter, but um, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you got a lot of prep to do for uh, for tour. 
Um, so we could probably we could probably wrap this up. But yeah, you gotta um, get to uh, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, brother. Cleveland, my bad. Cleve- oh, it's all good. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, thanks um thanks for hanging out. Thanks for chatting with me. Hope you had a good time. Um, I had a lovely time. Hell yeah, we'll have to have you any any time you want to come back. Just okay. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna come with some ideas, uh, and I'm gonna, yeah. and I'll I'll just pitch them, and then you can, okay, and, and then we can build it together. We could like have a freestyle uh, rap battle <laughs> or something. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> just a diss battle where we're just insulting yeah. each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just aren't friends anymore after just so mean. Uh, <laughs> Um, but everybody, uh, go check out Max and Arkell's, uh, the new album blank twice comes out September 23rd. Correct. Yeah. 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 Um, so go check that out. They got a great, uh, bunch of awesome songs on there. Huge collabs fucking Mm -hmm. they're nailing it. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank you, Max. And, um, like comment, all that bullshit. Um, and I'll see ya. I'll see ya next week. Thanks, Gert. Bye.